Okay, so let's look at uh, a, a method called finite fields of integers with modulo of a prime or a prime field. So we use this fairly extensively in cryptography, especially in areas such as public key encryption and also in key exchange. Uh, so it's based around prime numbers. So prime numbers are numbers which are only divisible by themselves and one. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19 are examples of, of prime numbers. So what we do is we create, in cryptography, what we create is a, is a finite field of integers modulo P. So P is the modulus uh, operation and it's the remainder of an integer division. So P is a prime number. This will create what's called a finite field, which means that we will only get a certain uh, number of results uh, from this. The results that we get are between 0 and P minus 1. So if we have a prime field of 2, then our result, our output results are either 0 or 1. 11 gives us 0 up to 10, and 23 gives us 0 to 22. And it's a ring, so when we have our operations, then the ring rolls over, and then we start back at the other end uh, again. We also define this as a Gallus field of P, uh, and you also see this symbol being used uh, also for this concept. So here's an example of a Gallus field of 3, 0 plus 0 is 0, of course, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, and so we can't get 3, so we roll over back to 0 again. So it's 3 divided by 3 gives us one remainder 0. We're not interested in the first part, but only in the remainder. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, which is 0. 2 times 2 is 4, so the result of that for the Gallus field of 3 will be 1. OK, so let's take an example with a equal to 5, b equal to 20, and our prime number of 23. So our finite field of integers will be 0 up to 22. So a plus b is 5 plus 20, which is 25, and then we take mod of 23, so that will be, uh, when we divide, we have 1 remainder 2, so the result is 2. When we have 5 minus 20, then that's minus 15, and then we would count back from 23 to give us an answer of 8. Next, we've got 5 times 20 mod p, so 5 times 20 is 100, and if we do our, our division, we end up with a remainder of 8. So in this way, we can actually perform our calculations. Okay, so this is our little page here that we can just check. So we'll take 5 and 20, and we'll take a prime number of 23, and we'll just check our results here, 2, 8, and then 8. To the power of, this is the same, a to the power of b, 5 to the power of 20, we take mod of p, and we end up with 12 here. We can use uh, Python to be able to, to do these calculations uh, quickly. So we want to, uh, a is equal to 5, b is equal to 20, and prime is 23. So we'll just print a plus b, We'll just make sure that our brackets are in there. A plus B mod P is 2. So we can do our subtraction. We end up with 8. And then we'll do a multiplication. We also end up with 8. And we'll do to the power of, in Python, to the power of is that. So we end up with that. So the one difference is when we have uh, a divide, uh, when we don't use the same type of math arithmetic operators that we would normally use. So what we're trying to find is the inverse, the value inverse mod p that will give us uh, 
uh, the equivalent value. So we end up with B A times A divided by B is A times B to the minus 1 mod P. For this, we use the extended Euclidean algorithm to be able to find the inverse. So if we have 20, 20 mod 23 is 15 by running it through this little program uh, here. So in this example here, we've got an example. There's the inverse, which is 15. We multiply 15 by 5 and then take the mod of 23. And in this case, the answer is 6. As an example, here's the Diffie-Hellman uh, method, which uses uh, this uh, technique. So gener Bob generates g to the power of x mod p. So both Bob and Alice know the power of the, the value of g and the, the value of p, but they will generate their own random values x and y. Okay, so we'll just bring our terminal back. Okay, so in this case, if x is 10 and Alice's value is 15, and the g value we're going to use is 3, and the prime number we're using is 17. Okay, so Bob's value um, is g to the power of x mod p so he gets 8 Alice because does her value and then uh, Alice sends over her value to Bob and Bob will raise her value 6 to the power of his x to get 15 and then Alice will take Bob's value which is 8 and raise that to the power of y then take mod p and they end up with the same value. So this is key exchange and, and even though Eve is listening to the communication she wouldn't be able to tell because of the discrete logarithm problem here. Obviously we're using very small values so it would be easy to tell but if we use large values like 1024 bit prime numbers it's actually very difficult to do this. And the great thing about uh, this type of operation is that we can use our normal arithmetic operators and perform our functions by taking mod p each time. So the a times b and then mod p is the same as a mod p times b mod p. And then we can multiply them together and then take the mod p. So here's an example here. So I've just calculated this. A times B mod P gives us 34. If I just take uh, A mod, if I take A mod P times B mod P and then take mod P, I end up with, a, with the same uh, result. Same again for A plus B. We can operate on our values in a mod way. And then we can take the, the mod of the, the result. Okay, so this is the way, this is the reason that, uh, or one of the reasons that lay the Diffie-Hellman method actually works. Okay, so that's been a brief introduction to finite fields of integers with modulo of a prime, or the prime field. Thank you.